Hi everyone and welcome back to Rise Up Intro Tech. My name is Tyler, I'm a journalist here at the Fintech Times and yeah today we're celebrating everything great about intro tech. I am joined here now by Sarah. How are you Sarah? I'm very well thank you and thank you very much for having me. A great event so far. Thank you very much. I, I, we just came off of your panel didn't we? Your innovation panel. That went really really well. You were talking to some, some industry experts and they provided such great insights. Did you, did you enjoy this, the talk? I did. I mean, it's always mm. great to meet, uh, to meet new people and mm. to reacquaint with people that you know very well. Yeah. So we had representation from uh, Marshmallow, not a company that I'd understood much about or, or, or met before. So it was great to see some of the things that they were doing and some of the ways that they were using innovation. We also had um, Steve Jones from Comparison Creator, someone who's been in the insurance market for a long time. Um, he himself uh, was saying he has 30 decades, uh, 30? Yeah, 30 decades of, it, of experience. Um, uh, so, you know, he brings a wealth of wisdom to the market. Mm -hmm. And then you have Alex with Dynamo Cover, again, a new entrant disturbing the market. So it was great to see that combination. Um, personally, for me, representing fintech wales and representing the fintechs and insurtechs in mm. wales mm. Um, it was great to have welsh um, participation in that wales is very well known for its expertise in insurance mm. uh, given that admiral insurance started in wales 30 years ago of course yeah uh, a very innovative organization run by very forward-thinking diverse and inclusive leaders mm. that are still very much around the insurance um, market in South Wales today mm. supporting new entrants mm. uh, which is fantastic but they generated that innovative inquisitive um, entrepreneurial spirit and we saw things like confused um, being born out of Admiral and that helped to spurn the comparison sites and obviously Steve was talking to us about comparison earlier on and how technology was being used in, in that marketplace but yeah it was a really good panel yes. and it was really good to see the new with the more experienced and, and, and where the two were were complementing and crossing over. It was a really, it was a really diverse panel. I, I, I thought it was. They raised some really interesting points, and you did a, a really great job at, at managing it. So I thought that was fantastic. Sarah, I'm so sorry. We've we've left our viewers wondering wondering who we're talking to. Would you like to give a, just a brief description of, of who you are and, and where you've come from? Yeah, of course. Um, um, so my, my name is Sarah Williams Gardner. I have the privilege of running Fintech Wales. Fintech Wales is a not-for-profit organisation that represents the fintechs, the incumbent financial services and the insurance market in the Welsh um, Principality. Uh, a very dynamic and a thriving uh, cluster for insurance and for financial disruption for the fintech. So that's my day job. Um, before that, I was one of the founding members of Starling Bank, which came into the financial world 2015 to disrupt that. And I think the in interesting thing that I'm seeing here is that insurance is coming into the market. I think both the, the, the gentlemen we had on the panel, Dynamo and Marshmallow, were entrants into the market in 2017. Starling and Monzo and Revolut and Wise and some of these um, disruptors, financial disruptors, came into the market about 2014, 2015. So it's interesting to see there's that little bit of a lag, mm -hmm. um, but we're seeing the, uh, the insurance market um, really sort of embracing that, that disruption. Um, but yeah, my, so my, my experience is that I've worked in tech for many years, but often with a consumer lens. Um, and, and have a passion for fairness and inclusivity. Uh, and so I'm really liking the way that the markets are going at the moment, democratization, being based on data. We heard it earlier on in the panel um, where rather than going for traditional data points mm. that not all consumers are able to satisfy, we're seeing people like these new entrants being broader in the data sets that they're actually um, basing their decisions on, which which opens more people up to products. I mean, I think the marshmallow uh, gentleman David was saying that 
one of the areas they focused on when they first started was to look at new people coming into the UK, people moving into the UK, therefore you didn't have a history in the UK, you didn't pass your driving test in the UK, so how do they get insurance? And that was something that was unbelievably difficult for them to do and very, very costly. So using those different data points and actually not, you know, not, not being quite so um, lazy but more proactive about going out to different markets, getting different data points. So that was a particular, um, that was particularly interesting to me is, is where these new sort of disruptor entrants are putting the consumer at the base of what they're doing and why they're doing it. And we, we heard earlier on today from, um, from the gentleman from Bought by Many, the pets um, insurance, again, how they're going to different data points. And I think, you know, insurance is something that many people uh, see as a grudge purchase or something that they have to have because of regulation. But I think the way that they're looking at broadening the information on which they're making those decisions and making it more consumer focused and therefore showing the consumer the value and the ease of interaction, um, I think it makes something that's often grudge into mm. something that becomes much more pleasant. Well, I think you're exactly on the money there and you know it, you, you really you really put forward the importance of, of data and good data within within inshore tech. I think especially in, in light of the pandemic and and the last the turmoil of the last three months, I, I think insurance and a safety net almost has become very important to, to, to the consumer. Is, is there anything else, I mean, we discussed the, the use of data, is there anything else within insure tech that you've really noticed within the last three years as, as coming into prominence? Um, I, I think what, what we're starting to see, uh, and it, it is, it, it's just the, um, the sort of integration as opposed to being quite so siloed. Um, again, this brings the consumer benefits. And, and when you've got that ability to cross over, and, and it does all come from data really, and it is down to good quality data, but when you can then put intelligence on top of that, and you can use AI, you can use machine learning, obviously you can look to streamline your processes, improve the customer journey. I think that that focus on the customer journey and the customer touch points and the interaction and the way that we are really looking at UX and UI and making those interactions more personable um, and more enjoyable or more relevant at the point of which you want to interact with them. Mm. Um, understanding that many people don't want to be on hold for a length of time um, and therefore interacting and using things that just make the user journey and the user experience um, more interesting. I think the, the pandemic has also sort of really raised for us um, telematics and telematics and black boxes have certainly been around a long time. I mean, I, I spent many of my working years at IBM and about 20 years ago, we started putting black boxes in cars with insurance companies and it was, it was a slow, slow burn. But what we've seen with the pandemic is that people now are looking at how often do I use my car? Um, what value do I get out of my car? Um, I want a bit more flexibility. And so that idea that you could choose a policy that looks at your behavior, the consumer behavior, and then prices accordingly or rewards accordingly, encouraging good behavior. And I think the interesting thing there is that the, the communication, therefore, with the consumer has to be very much focused on this is for your benefit and you will get the rewards back from it, as opposed to feeling as though we're just being watched and um, marked on our homework, if you like. Mm -hmm. So I think telematics we'll see more of. I think the other interesting thing, which we've certainly seen through Fintech Wales and through the foundry that we have, we've been running an accelerator programme now um, for the last sort of nine months. We've had two cohorts going through. And in the first cohort, we saw a lot of car subscription. Um, so car subscription and a new model. So are people going to be owning cars? Most probably not. The insurers are really looking at that market. It's, it's no surprise that Admiral is being very proactive, and I'm sure the others are as well, um, that, that a lot of that sort of standard um, traditional um, insurance 
products are going to are going to be challenged. So the subscription markets for um, for cars. Will we own our cars? Will, you know, what other products will we take through subscription? We've seen a lot of that in the market with music um, uh, and, and many other sort of things that just come to us on a, you know Netflix and everything else. We're very used to those models. So I think I think that's another interesting thing that we're going to see, and it's going to challenge the. Um, insurance market to make sure that actually the products do come with that cover and that security mm. that the uh, the individual and the consumer is going to require. I, I think uh, definitely I 100% I agree with you and I think this sort of element of personalization within insurtech services is, is, is becoming more forefront in, in the industry and I think it's going to make insurtech more accessible and more more appropriate in, in certain uh, circumstances, I, I would agree. Now, Sarah, just because we've got you here, I'm, I would be a fool not to ask you about fintech and insurtech in Wales. How has, how has Wales become such a prominent player in fintech and in insurtech? Um, so this time last year, we, uh, we saw the publication of the Khalifa Review, which was led by Ron Khalifa. That review took a uh, snapshot across the UK. Uh, it was, it, again, I keep talking to, about data, but it took, it, it looked at uh, where insure, where um, uh, fintechs and shortechs were, um, who was doing what, where they were across the UK, and, and it actually ranked the UK from a cluster perspective. And one of the things that it identified was that um, South Wales, in particular in Cardiff, there was a thriving um, fintech in shortech cluster. Um, up until then, up until the publication of that report, um, which I wholeheartedly support because it's raised some challenges um, and some opportunities for us across the industry, but what it did was it sort of lifted the lid on what South Wales and Cardiff had been doing quite quietly for a very long time. So we talk about Admiral Insurance um, establishing themselves in Cardiff uh, 30 years ago and spinning out innovative businesses uh, and that has created an ecosystem and, and with every cluster to be successful you need components of an ecosystem um, and, and that's what we see in, in Cardiff, South Wales, Newport, Swansea and actually potentially more broadly um, across that sort of western, what's being um, named as the western gateway. So from Swansea to Slough uh, we're seeing this um, this thriving sector. So that, that lifted the lid. Um, I would suggest this has always been going on. Um, the Welsh are not always um, a proactive and so um, encouraging them to talk about their successes is certainly one of the roles that we have at Fintech Wales and, and, and showing what we're great at and promoting the great products and businesses that we have um, is, is something that we're terribly proud to do and we encourage our our members to do that but you know in that cluster it, it comes down to the components so we have a great ecosystem we have a great community um, we have brilliant academic universities and higher education um, we have that relationship we also have investment we have the uh, development bank of wales which is the third largest lender in the uk and, and they are also based down in south wales so those components are really important to making a cluster we we have them we are getting them to collaborate a lot more um, and as i said i i believe this sector has been thriving for a long time but we've lifted the lid and started to tell the rest of the uh, the country just how great we are well that's all very very exciting and well, well done to South Wales. I mean, they've, they've really put themselves on, on the map of fintech, you know, and I, I think it's, it's such an exciting time for, for, for UK insurtechs and fintechs in general. Like, it's, uh, and, it and is, really and I think those emerging, and as you know, we, we've, we've, had, um, we've seen open banking and open data in the, the, the fintech arena. We're starting to talk about that in insurtechs, and I think what's going to come next is that protection for the consumer, protection of the consumer's um, data points, information, and, and embracing that to put the consumer in the driving seat. Mm. Um, so I, I, think, I think it's got a really interesting, interesting future ahead, and, and we have only just started, you know, really just scratching the surface. And I think if we keep the consumer right forefront and centre, 
then I think we will and keep talking to them as well um, because you know there's no point in sitting in a dark room developing a product um, constantly test constantly iterate use those agile ways of developing and I, and I think we've got a really interesting market and for me what I want is for the UK um, Wales and the rest of the regions so there's some great stuff happening across the rest of the regions you know for the UK to retain its position as a world leader in fintech and in shortech uh, and, and that's going to be good for all of us for, good for the economy um, good for the next generation interesting jobs um, yeah and i think that that's that's my sort of exciting view of where where the future is going to go well that's that's a, a wonderful prediction and I, I i really hope that the uk will will do everything that it can to, to really put itself forward in the industry this has been a really, really great interview, Sarah. Thank you so much for taking the time. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me and, and for organising the sunshine. Thank oh, you. Oh, yes, I put it out just for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lovely Thank to meet you. you. Take much. care.